When am I? When? What's the date? It's the 23rd of October, 2019. To be more precise, it's 7.25 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in Washington, D.C. Thank you. You seem surprised. I seem to slip between the now, the late 18th century, and the early 23rd century, and sometimes I lose track. Yes, I am a, a time traveler, but, but no, I'm, I'm not crazy. Not, not yet. So you think you travel in time? Well, of course, the, the rational explanation is that I have vivid dreams. You see, when I'm in the past or indeed the future, it feels so very real to me. It's as real as sitting in, in your office today, Dr. Hellman. I see. Richard, are you experiencing any intense or unusual stress at the current time? Of course, there's this pressure at the, the Smithsonian Museum where I work. There's a big exposition, exhibition coming up, um, Georgium Sidus, but my job isn't causing me to hallucinate, though it may be causing the involuntary time travel. Excuse my ignorance, um, what is Georgium? Sidus, uh, Sidus. What is Georgium, Georgium Sidus about? It's the original name for the planet Uranus, uh, George's star, uh, so-called because it was discovered in the reign of King George III of England. I think it's a more fitting name than Uranus, which reminds most folk of their own ass. So. I don't subscribe to Freudian psychology, but like how young, I do respect the power of archetypes. <laughs> so do I. Though I have no choice. You know that I get sent back to when George III was on the throne? It wasn't he the mad one. Like me, you mean? No, sorry. Um, so that was unprofessional. I, uh... It was a, a Freudian slip. <laughs> but you don't believe in Freud. Or time travel, for that matter. <laughs> if it's real for you, then it's real for me. Let's talk about this 18th century. What do you do there? I am a German immigrant, a musician who goes by the name of William Herschel. Sitting here in this room, I know that I will discover Georgium Sidus. But when I'm back there, it's like I forget this. I look to the to the starry skies and I wonder. I know that I'm going to find something, but, but I don't know what that something is. Interesting. And, uh, are you alone in this quest? I have a sister, Caroline. Do you have a sister in the present? I did. She was my twin. I, I never knew her. She, she died in the womb. Survivor's guilt is not uncommon, Richard. I know where you're going with this and you're wrong. I, I'm not mad. I'm not crazy. And, and these are not hallucinations. Alex, I'll accept that. Now our time is almost up. Is there anything else that you want to discuss? Not right now. Excellent. Then I'll see you next week. That's a... Uh... 2019. I will remember the when, and, and you will remember the how much. Indeed. In the meantime, good luck with the exhibition. And Richard, uh, for our next appointment, bring me something, bring something back to me from dear old England, huh? As my love you do me wrong to cast me off discourteously, for I have loved you 
well and long, delighting in your company. Prince Leaves was all my joy, Green Sleeves was my delight. Green Sleeves was my heart of gold, and who but my good Lord, Green Sleeves. Oh, oh, that was excellent, dear sister. I think it is just a matter of time before your voice rings out in the in the, the assembly rooms in Bath or in the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden. Oh, flattery will get you nowhere, dear brother. Methinks you've been up to mischief. <laughs> you know me too well. <laughs> But it is not mischief that has occupied my time, dear, but, but science. You see, I have a surprise for you. What is this contraption? Behold, it is a reflecting telescope. With this we can see the stars above and, and perhaps discover new wonders. It has a fiendishly clever design. You see, it contains curved mirrors, which amplify the way in which this they... with our rent money? William, we are poor, struggling musicians. You must return this extravagance at once. No, no, Caroline Liebchen, the rent is taken care of. I received sixpence from St. John's Church for my latest concerto. Besides, who could place a price on beauty? And the heavenly bodies are beautiful, are they not? They are, dear brother. They are. Then, then let us set up the telescope in the garden. I hear that the, the skies will be very clear tonight. Just that your majesty is content with this state of world affairs. Ah, jolly hockey sticks, Lord North. I was just perusing this, uh, the roof widow's list in the London Examiner. That's one or two temperatures in there, I should say. <laughs> and what would Her Majesty say? Prime Minister North, you're such a killjoy. But I am a king, and what's the point of being so if one can't rape, pillage, and accost rich widows? Hmm. There is the matter of governing the country. Uh, that's your job. Uh, by the way, how are you and your Tory party handling my kingdom? Hmm. The peasants are being kept in line. Ah, very good. The French have been taken down a peg or two. And what about the upstart in the Americas, George Washington? Hmm, oh, well, it's only a matter of time before that treasonous rebel gets his comeuppance. I should think so too. America can only have one King George and you're looking at him. This radical does not want the throne, Your Majesty. He is much more impudent than that. Mr. Washington believes in the equality of all men, and that men should be free to elect their own government. <laughs> <laughs> what next? Votes for women? <laughs> Your Majesty has an excellent sense of humour. <laughs> William, I spy something a little queer. How so, dear sister? There is a star which does not twinkle. The other stars twinkle, but not this one. Let, let me see. Hmm. It is no star. It is a planet. It is Venus. You see, there are heavenly bodies which give off light, like the sun and the stars. But there are heavenly bodies which reflect light, such as planets and moons and comets. Oh, it's fascinating. Perhaps one night 
we will find a new world up there in the cosmos. <laughs> one can dream, dear sister. No one has found a new planet since before Plato and Aristotle were babes. Mercury, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, and our own Earth. Nature has bestowed six worlds upon us. It would be avarice to look for a seventh. Yet we wish to look. We do. What ho? I spy something new in the cosmos. Wait, I, I. I spy something really new in the cosmos. Wait, I must pull my star chart. Wait. Discovery, Carolina, Carolina, a discovery. It is a new comet. A new comet. I must write at once to the Royal Observatory. Good news, William. But will this pay our rent? Yes, the Royal Observatory will pay a shilling for each new comet found. A whole shilling! We are saying! <laughs> and the discoverer can give their very own name to the comet. Think of it, a comet called Villa William. William Herschel. So, the war isn't going well? Well, that's a trifle exaggeration of what I meant, Your Majesty. Then what the devil do you mean? Out with it, North. It is true that Mr. Washington has so far evaded our capture, and that the rebels have received considerable support from the French. <laughs> and we were unfortunate that our supply lines were disrupted by storms in the North Atlantic. Stop making excuses. Those American rebels are making me a laughing stock. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Your Majesty. <laughs> kind words, Prime Minister, but I fear the people of England will be less forgiving. What we need is something that will boost national morale in these dark days. Ooh, my thoughts exactly. Any suggestions? Ooh. It has come to my attention that one of your subjects has discovered a comet. May I recommend that we hold a banquet at the palace in honour of this hero? I just want the public will give a hoot for some old duffer from the World Observatory. <laughs> uh, the man of whom I speak is but a humble commoner who found the comet with a telescope in his back garden. I say. Now, to bring this fellow into the palace would tell the world that it is King George III and not the upstart George Washington, who is the true champion of the common man. That is fiendishly clever, even for a politician. Now, if they were also to invite some rich widows. Oh, consider it done, Your Majesty. Uh. I'm sorry, Dr. Helman, I'm, I'm running a little late. Now, can a time traveler be late? <laughs> Look, no matter, I'll add it to your bills. <laughs> I, um, I have something for you. <laughs> oh, thanks, Richard, the, uh, the gift from England. It was Herschel's star chart. How very antiquarian. Will the 18th century miss it? <laughs> you mean, will the Smithsonian miss this? Anyway, I am Herschel, or at least I was. And uh, how are things in merry old England? Well, for England, disaster is looming. Yorktown will fall to Washington, marking the end of the Revolutionary War. But you already know this. As would any high school patriot. Uh, in contrast, William Herschel has never had it so good. He thinks he's discovered a comet, but very soon his find will be confirmed as a planet. He's been invited to the palace for a party, but he will be totally elated when the king gives him a job at the Royal Observatory. <laughs> and how's your own exhibition progressing here in DC? Yeah, stressful. It's a pain in the butt trying to get your hands on some 200-watt blue-green lights. 
Oh, that's the color of the methane atmosphere of Georgium Sidus. The methane from Uranus. Excuse me. Uh, sometimes this office needs a little levity to clean the grim tales off the grim walls. I'm not joking. Sorry. <clears throat> I'll be going there in the 23rd century. Not to Uranus itself, but to one of its moons. Umbriel, the bringer of tears. Sounds ominous. It's not as bad as it sounds. Umbriel was a comedic character from the poetry of Alexander Pope. I'm not familiar with this po poet. But you have heard of Shakespeare. Yes, uh, once more into the breach, dear friends, once more, or close up the walls with our English dad. Bravo, Dr. Hellman. The I stage like awaits. <laughs> Dabbled in community theater at Harvard, but uh, psychology pays. <clears throat> Better? Psychology pays, that's uh, <laughs> it, period. <laughs> and 24 out of the 27 moons of Uranus are named after characters in Shakespeare plays. And just three take names from the poetry of Pope. But Umbriel is special. At least it will be. Now, the United Space Agency thinks that the Wonder Crater near the equator of Umbriel contains valuable minerals. Okay, but what do you expect to find? I'm not sure. Why do you ask? Well, speaking as your psychologist, I think you are a man who is apprehensive about his future. Now tell me, who is Wonder? Uh, a character from Shakespeare or from Pope? Neither. The Wonder are found in the legends of the Aborigines. They were the restless ghosts of the dead. I get it. Get what? That it is vitally important that you go to this moon, this uh, umbriel. Oh. What if there's nothing there, Dr. Hellman? Uh, nothing but worthless rock and dust. Oh, I expect you to find something, Richard. Something amazing. Status report, Puck. It is the year 2222. You have been in suspended animation for 22 years. Your life signs are stable. You may experience mild nausea, but this will pass. How is Earth? There was a war, yet the human race still exists. Your orders are unchanged. We are in orbit around Umbriel. We will land in the Wonder Crater in three Earth hours. Have we learned anything new about wonder? The long range spectrometer indicates that there are diamond type deposits and some material which we have not yet identified. There was also a radio signal, which we have received eight weeks ago. May I hear it, Puck? Save me from this place. I'm in outer space. That's, that's a woman's voice. It is a vocal approximation for a humanoid woman. But that's not possible. Only, only Earth can sustain human life. How can, how can she be out here? The data is insufficient to reach a valid conclusion. It's like a, it's like a siren. Centuries ago, sailors spoke of women who would lure men to their deaths by singing near rocks. The mind can play tricks on men who've been kept away from women too long. And I have been away from other humans for 22 years. Puck, play the song again. Save me from this place. I didn't expect to hear this for a second time. There must be some, some rational explanation. Um, perhaps it's a, a, a radio signal that left Earth many, many years ago. That's it. The song is just a relic from what used to be called a, a television program. That is a possibility. But it is a remote one. Have we received any other radio signals? Negative. Then it is a glitch. 
a, an outlier. In science, if, if we can't reproduce the experiment, we ignore it. Incoming radio transmissions detected. Press play. Alas, my lord, you do me wrong to cast me off discourteously. For I have loved you well and long, delighted in your company. Green sleeves was all my joy, green sleeves was my delight. Green sleeves was my heart of gold, and who but my good Lord Green That's imp that's impossible. Clarify. I I can't. Um from where did that signal or originate? What was it from the Wonder Crater? Affirmative. Is this a joke? Did the United Space Agency put you up to this? Negative. I don't know what to make of this. I must be losing my mind. Your vital signs are stable. But that's not the point. No matter. Wonder approaches. Lord North, where are my rich widows? I believe they are getting themselves ready, Your Majesty. Ah, jolly hockey sticks. Well, they'd better hurry up. One doesn't like to be kept waiting. Mm. In the meantime, I present the hero of the realm, a man for whom finding a comet was not enough, <laughs> a man who found and claimed a new world for your majesty. I present William Herschel. Your majesty. My liege. And with whom do I share the pleasure? Uh, my name is Caroline. I am William's sister. If only you were a rich widow. Oh, I'm afraid that I am but a poor German immigrant. Which part of Germany? Hanover. <laughs> Land of my fathers. <laughs> your Majesty, uh, don't you wish to learn more about your new planet? Naturally, it's all the rage here in Windsor. Mr. Herschel, that contraption your infamous telescope? Uh, uh, yes, my king. Nah, good show. Uh, one wishes to spy one's new world. Uh, then I need to set up the instrument on your majesty's balcony. Uh, make it so. Caroline, do you find comets in the starry skies? Uh, I dabble. It's totally spiffing. I say, no, I command that you and William come and work for me in the Royal Observatory. Oh, your Majesty has made a, a wise decision. Indeed, I have. Dear brother, we are saved. Uh, I have found it, my liege. I invite thee to gaze upon Georgium Cetus, George's planet. Tis a wonder to behold. Tis a celestial sphere. Tis mine. And tis cause for rejoicing. Let there be merriment and song. Save me from this place. Hear me in outer space. Oh, Fester. From whence cometh that melody? Oh, it came to me in a dreamlike vision. No matter, it is sweet to sing. <laughs> Too sweet to hear. <sighs> Doctor, Doctor Hellman. Thou knowest the king's physician. At ease, Lord North. The new astronomer royal knows most, most much. I bring glad tidings from the Americas. The rebels were put to the sword at Yorktown. Ah, and what of George Washington? 
let us say that his shoulders have parted company with his head. Oh, possible. It was a victory against the odds. We had the French Navy to contend with, but they did not reckon with British cannon shot, and their fleet now lies on the ocean floor. This just cannot be. Sir, do your sympathies lie with the American traitors? No, I am a patriot. It's just that I was sure. So sure. So sure that Washington would be victorious. This is treason. You're off with his head. Pardon me, your majesty. I think your astronomer is delirious. The excitement of finding a new planet can churn a man's mind. He knoweth not what he sayest. What does his sister say? Oh. You may have spied a comet. They say a comet appeared on neither the Battle of Hastings. A moment of disaster for King Harold. Perhaps he saw the comet and feared the worst for your majesty. Yet it is now clear that the comet fell out doom for that dog, George Washington. Ah, here, here. <laughs> One pardon, the Astronomer Royal. I thank my king. It, it appears I was mistaken. Don't make a habit of it. This is a little queer. I concur. What sayest the stargazers? Help me, brother dear. You knowest not. I, I knowest not. Georgium Sidus approaches. It is the wonder crater of Umbria. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Come hither, my brother. Who is your brother? In your rage, he is William. In another, he is Richard. My, my God. What ails thee? You perished in the womb. Why do you haunt me now? There will always be the shadows of the past, the travails of the present, and the unknowns of the future. So, I ask again, what ails thee? Something is lost. Something is missing. I don't know what it is, but I have been searching across time to find it. I hold in my hand that what you seek. What is it? It contains iron, silicates, and a few trace elements. It is what remains of a meteorite that struck the Wonder Crater many years ago. I call it Richard's Rock. Is it valuable? In monetary terms, it is almost worthless. In light of what it represents, what it means to you, it is priceless. Richard, in the Smithsonian Museum, you have humbly championed the achievements of others for many years. However, deep down, you wanted a piece of the pie by making a small discovery of your own. The ambitious thought gnarled in your mind like a, like a stone in a shoe. And now that you have it, well done, dear brother. Richard, Richard, are you, are you okay? What happened? Your colleagues phoned me. They said you had passed out. I must have. When is this? Pardon? Give me a date and, and a location. It's the 24th of October, 2019, and we're in Washington, D.C. Then I'm back. Back from where? It is a long story, but there's no time to tell it. The president will arrive tomorrow to open the exhibition. The president of the Smithsonian? No, I'm talking about the president of this, our, our great United States of America. I have told you many times in therapy that you must 
face facts. The United Kingdom of America has always been a constitutional monarchy. You can't be serious. Richard, King George VIII will be here tomorrow. As your doctor and as your friend, I advise you to keep your Republican fantasies to yourself. This can't be. Didn't you say that this is... This is D.C., the, the, the District of Columbia. This is our Republic's capital. Your hallucinations are returning, Richard. This is the Duchy of Columbia. Always has been and always will be. The rock. I must have it here somewhere. Ah, here it is. What is it? It's nothing. Nothing of any value, but I can see clearly now what she has given me. I have made a great discovery, the greatest of them all. I have found a new dimension, an alternative, alternative reality. You're not making any sense. I know what's going on. I'm going on. Dr. Hellman, have you heard of the planet Uranus? I can't say that I have. Uranus? you say? I mean, it sounds like something from a science fiction story, either that or something out of someone's backside, like. <laughs> and what, what is the seventh planet from our sun? Georgium Sidus. Top marks. But every high school kid knows that. Of course. Don't worry about me, doctor. I feel great. And this year's exhibition will be the best ever. I can promise you that. Green sleeves was all my joy. Green sleeves was my delight. Green sleeves was my heart of gold. And who but my lady? Green sleeves. has you wandering about the moors this time of night. Oh, a quick business with your husband. Hmm. Surprised you found the house. The will-o'-wisps didn't lead you somewhere else. Oh, will o -wisps. Just some child's tale. <laughs> Fairy tale. Fairy tales come from someone's experience. May I come in? Do it. He's out, my husband. At this time? So are you. Yes. However, I, I wouldn't normally be if this wasn't urgent business. Oh, I see. I'd be glad to see you. Hmm. I suppose. When will you return? What is he doing? What did you say your name was? I didn't. Well, will you now, then? John Dixon. You look familiar. <sighs> Dixon's all over this county. No, your face looks particularly familiar. In town, perhaps? No. I don't think that's it. Where is your husband? Cows. They need feeding and milking. I didn't realise you had cows. Were you at the McLean's Festival? Harvest? No. Hmm. They had a good harvest. 
I'm not often helping with harvests. Then what do you do? Uh, I work for the government. And that's why you're here? In a way. Mr. Dixon, tell me why you're here, otherwise I'll be forced to ask you to leave and the will-o'-wisps can guide you back home. You've heard that the harvest hasn't been good for many farms. No, the rain dried most of the plants this year. The farmers uh, have a theory. A story of a witch. So natural. I don't <laughs> I didn't think you believed in witches, Mr. Dixon. I don't believe in fairy tales. Well, aren't witches the same? I've seen plenty of witches. That's my job. I'm a witch pricker. A witch pricker? Just to find out if someone's really a witch? And you're here for me? Or my husband. Either of you could be a witch. Well, why would you want to prevent... Well, why would we want to prevent food on the tables and to stop the harvest? Oh, don't ask me what the devil wants. What are you doing? Getting my instruments. You need to leave, Mr Dixon. My husband won't like to find you here. I'll only trespass on your hospitality a moment longer. You're going to use that instrument on me? Well, it's just a pin. I pricked you several times to see if you have the devil's mark. The devil's mark? If the pin goes in, but you don't feel a thing, then that's the devil's mark. <laughs> You catch many a witch this way. Some. Well, if the devil were so cunning, he wouldn't leave a mark. There's no visible mark. Just one that isn't sensitive to pain. Are you ready? <laughs> I know that. I know who you are. <laughs> I've told you who I am. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> You're that woman. No. The woman that used to work in the town at the butcher's shop. I recognised your voice when you asked if I was ready. So you, a woman, are content to condemn other women to death? I could only have this job if I'm a man. Why do you want this job? Well, they pay me six shillings a day. More if I find a witch. <laughs> so you do quite well then, finding witches? Yes, I'm one of the best. I find them quite often. Well, of course. They pay you to find them. And how do you know when they're true witches? I do my job well. You don't worry what will happen to you and your soul if you send innocents to die? I don't do that. Only those with evil in their souls. And which am I, John? No, not John. That's not your real name. Let's begin. You won't be putting me unless I know your name. It's Christine. Christine Connell. And who gave you the post? John Innes hired me. As a woman? Of course not. Men think this is too difficult a job. And yet, here you are, ready to stick pins in me. Well, if you don't want to do it here, it can be done in a public square for everyone to see. Hmm? <gasps> oh, and that's how you get your subjects to oblige. Fine. Prick me on my arm.
You didn't scream. No. Did you feel it? Oh, I felt it. You saw me. There's blood there. Oh, and that means I'm not consorting with the devil. I bleed like a normal person. Yes, but I must prick another place. Your legs. Well, that's immodest. But I'm a woman. And if I thought you were still a man? Well, that's why I asked for your husband to be in the room. <laughs> Since I'm a woman. <laughs> My legs. Yes. Your feet. They're cloven. You are the devil himself. I'm not the devil, no. I'm Glaistig, the green maiden, protectress of this home. I can't be. If only you believed in the fairies as much as you do in evil spirits. There's no test for us. But... I'm here to protect the family, so I sent them away. You see, I knew you were coming, Christine Cornell. I know your past and future. Please, don't harm me. Please, don't harm me. Don't harm others. Go, but no longer be paid for finding victims. Instead, find another life far from here. I will, if only you spare me. I'm not evil. Just because you don't understand me doesn't make me evil. But your feet... <laughs> for galloping across the fields, I protect the herds of cows and sheep and goats, and human feet do me no good. I'll leave. No! Leave your things here. I'll burn them like I will you if you hunt any more witches. Then, then good, 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 good evening. <laughs> Thank you for the kindness. Don't speak of witches for the rest of your life. Only to deny that I've ever met one. <laughs> you won't come after me. <laughs> I might haunt you to watch you and to know what you're doing. I promise. And then I will keep mine. To let you live without harming anyone again. Maybe we should uh, do one more speed run. Where to? You know I'm talking about the lines, unless you're off the book. I've gone off this book. Have you now? Yes. This, this classic, you mean, this, this penguin classic. Just because it's got a penguin logo on it doesn't mean it's a classic. Well, it kind of does, actually. We could go for a pint. I hear there's a little village nearby with a great gastro pub. We have a cooler box full of drink. Not the same. I want it in a proper glass with a coaster and a packet of crisps in a beer garden. We've got a multi-pack and three different sorts of nuts, so... There'll be a jukebox. And before you say, we have Music, just don't. All right? Oh. You know, when my agent called and asked if I fancied doing some theatre in a park, I was incredibly excited. This is still a park, technically. Yeah. A caravan park. A static <laughs> motorhome and lodge facility, actually. 
You know, when I was young, I used to dream about being in movies. And I'd picture myself in one of those enormous Winnebago efforts. It's a bit like a Winnebago. What? <laughs> it's, it's got an awning. Awning yawning. I'm talking about one of those decked out ones. All plush and comfortable with fresh flowers cut and a, a huge basket of exotic fruit and freshly baked pastries. Not the flowers, obviously, but, but it goes without saying. Unless they were the edible variety, I suppose. Okay, I bet there's a Greg's. There's always a Greg's. I could go on a recce, bring you back some scran. Uh, could you get a, uh, oh, I could get you a vegan sausage roll and a couple of yum yums. What do you want? I'd like a proper theater with a heated dressing room, please. Oh, and a clean hotel room with a power shower and fluffy robes. Come on, it's above equity minimum plus expenses. And room service. And a big, large screen telly. And we're getting double bubble with us being married, so... For the time being, I'd watch this space if I were you. Come on. This is the sort of gig that you and I would have jumped at when we were younger. You know, taking theatre out of the, the black boxes and getting into unusual spaces, making it exciting and accessible to the masses. Masses? <laughs> Possibly. A chance to, to grapple with those big issues. Just the, the two of us working together on a, on a new script. I thought you said it was a classic. Well, it is. It's a new adaptation. About a cockroach. Well, that's one way of looking at it. A giant creepy crawly. The idea that, that modern society isolates humans from one another. The main character... Which is you. Yes, which is me, desires to be, to be free from his burdens. He hates his life as a travelling salesman and seeks change, so he transforms into a... Cockroach. Sort of. Which is me. Which is you, allowing him to be to be free and and live simply, scurrying about carefree like like an insect. I hate the bug suit. What? The bug suit. I hate it. Uh, what's wrong with it? It's a bug suit. <laughs> and and I told you. Ages ago, I wasn't comfortable wearing it. It makes me look like a hungry caterpillar. There's loads of elasticated arms and legs hanging down and, and the material is, it's really itchy. What happened to my idea of using puppets? You know what? I don't think your heart is in this. It's not my heart I'm worried about. It's bloody see-through. It's just made out of skimpy mesh. Well, maybe you should uh, put it on then and give me a thrill. I don't think you're taking this seriously. Come on, if the caravans are rocking, don't come and knock in. And then there's that song. You don't like the song? A reworking of the Bowie song changes. Cracking tune. You sing it then. It'll work if you do the dance at the same time, the, the, the way the choreographer suggested at rehearsals. I am not break dancing. Oh. oh, I turned down a super drug advert to come and do this. Come on, live theater. You and me together on the, on the drama front line, fighting the good fight. Under our awning. Doing what we were both trained to do. Flexing our artistic muscles. Really? Hmm. Well, go over there and flex yours and put the kettle on. I can't. Why? I, um, 
I plugged it in earlier and I blew the electrics. Come on then. Let's do some lines. What? Oh, oh you mean the script? Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> no songs. And definitely no dancing. Deal. <laughs> right. Uh, <clears throat> Metamorphosis. Act one, scene one. Gregor Samsa awoke one morning from uneasy dreams and found himself transformed into a... Uh, fuck it. Let's just go to that pub, eh? Stop off at the Greg's on the way. Absolutely. <laughs> Cockroach. <laughs> you cheeky devil. <laughs> We're in an emergency. Christ, what are you doing? I had to contact you. Everything feels so upside down. I, um... uh, it's, it's fine. I'm on my lunch break. Abby, what the hell is this? You didn't hear. The Great Pyramid of Giza, you're the defining symbol of Egypt, is uh, gone. Do, do, do I need to call your doctor again? So the last of the seven wonders of the world just vanished. All 479 feet of it. It's the tallest structure made by human hands. Uh, we definitely need to call your doctor. She meant me to readjust your meds. So I haven't heard anything about this pyramid disappearing. <laughs> the Great Pyramid of Giza, Jeremy. It has a name. Show it the respect it deserves, eh? Uh, <laughs> fine. The, the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's gone. It's maybe not the only thing that's gone. It's all over the news and the internet. <laughs> Um, the pyramid was constructed out of these massive stones of immense size and weight. No one can conceive how humans could possibly have created it. Uh, and uh, what is this? Well, I'm trying to recreate it. How, how do you think it disappeared? Do you think um, aliens or UFOs landed in Egypt just and made it vanish? Oh my God, no. Abby, have you taken too much lithium? Uh, what about your latitude? I wish you'd help me figure this out. There's a, there's a theory that Hebrew slaves created the pyramid. Maybe their spirits came back to seek vengeance or... I have a few more minutes before I need to get back out there. Let, let, let's talk. Is there time to talk? No, we must take action now. Abby, how can you take action? You no longer drive. Climate change. You refuse to fly. Climate change. Uh, you become a hardcore vegan. I'm environmentally woke. You need the hospital again. I'm, I'm no longer equipped. The Roman Colosseum probably perished because of an earthquake. The Incans abandoned the Great Wall of China. So don't abandon me. Uh, s slow down. I I'm, I'm not abandoning you. We're losing the magnificent creations of beauty. We're losing um, things that leave us awestruck. We need things that make us marvel. You make me marvel. I'm in awe of you. Huh. Oh, Christ, Abby, I need to talk to you. Where is the reverence for the sublime, the surreal, greed, destruction, illness? You know, nothing lasts, Jeremy. Nothing I'm, I'm, lasts. Ca I'm calling a doctor. Fine. Call her, but she won't understand. Nobody understands. I'm just trying to make things last. <laughs> Abby, you're extremely manic again. The Great Pyramid was built over a 20-year period. You've either taken too much medication... During the reign of King Kufa. Or, or you've stopped taking it, like before. Abandonment, you said abandonment. Abandonment. Um, maybe I should take you to an urgent care when I'm finished working. People robbing magnificent structures. I'll, I'll take a day off at work tomorrow. Uh, maybe we can get in with the psychiatrist. I don't want to see my psychiatrist. If I remember correctly, your medication was only filled six or seven days ago. Have you taken too many pills? 
Stop evading my question. I threw my meds away. They um, exhaust me, cloud up my brain. Uh, with, without them, you're mainly re relapse. This, this is just a mountain of junk. Don't. I refuse to go for another episode of you misusing a medication. You are not in charge of how I choose to handle my bipolar disorder. You're a thief. You're, a, you're just like the British ambassador. And, oh God, what's his name? No, he stole the precious artifacts from the Pantheon and then he took, took them to London. Oh, here we go again. The bastard had his people steal 17 life-size marble fits um, and 15 sculpted panels. He was greedy and defiant and robbed Athens of its history. Artifacts of beauty, magnificent, you're just gone. These are not ancient artifacts and I am your husband. By making me take that poison, you're robbing me of me. I need my imagination to be fully intact if these historic uh, structures continue to just vanish. You, you are my wife and, and I love you, but you need to live from reality. Maybe you're meant for the mundane and the regular, but I'm not. Oh. I read the works of great thinkers, philosophers, yeah, Aristotle, Knights, Plato, Kant, Heidegger, and your, your favourite authors are oh, uh, Harlan Coben, James Patterson, Dan Brown, Tom fucking Clancy. No. <laughs> the Greek pantheon disappeared. That's a work of fiction. It could disappear tomorrow for all you know. So you need to feel honoured that you married a visionary like me. <laughs> You're impossible, difficult, and infuriating, but yet... They're people, Jeremy. They're more than statistics. They're human beings, and we're losing them. Where is the genuine regard for the people who are sick? Where is the veneration for the people who died? You're continuing to die. I, I, I wish I knew. Nothing lasts, Jeremy. I, I know this is your creation. Yes. But um, I think you might need some rulers, highlighters, pens, maybe? Oh, that's a great idea. Maybe, maybe some coffee cups and a, and a takeout container too. It's just that I cannot tolerate tales of espionage and spies infiltrating the government to learn valuable state secrets. I hope you understand. Uh, he's hardly a visionary like you. Oh, I, I'm, I'm also a dreamer and a thinker. Would you mind if I helped you after work? What about the urgent care? Somehow this feels more pressing. We're officially creative collaborators. Thank you for not disappearing. Can't wait to kiss your face. I love you. Thanks, Jeremy. I will love you forever.